Have you ever heard of fandom, cosplay, or furries? They call themselves furries, and they gather by the hundreds wearing cartoon animal costumes. Furries are fans of anthropomorphic creatures. They dress like animals, or perhaps just wearing a furry tail. The furries are in town! It's for furry fandom. Up to a million people worldwide belong to the furry fandom. What is a furry? Why is it so popular? Uh, to me personally, like <laughs> it's a form of escapism. In first, it's a great stress reliever, but it's the sense of community that it brings me because I have so many friends through it. That would probably would be what it would personally is to me. Well, <laughs> I go by Mutley. Um, the whole idea was that like he was a mutt because he's a mix of two breeds. Yeah, so he's got the wolf part of him and he's also got the deer part. Because I remember seeing um, fursuiters at a convention called Ertcon uh, years and years ago. And I thought they were really cool. I didn't really understand what they were. I actually, like, I didn't even know that the word for them was furries. So I got a picture with them because they were cool. Um, and then like it, easily over a year later, I finally started to realize what these guys actually were. So I simply Googled, I was like, are there any in Ireland? So I just Googled Irish furries. And then a website came up, just irishfurries.com. So I was like, oh, this is perfect. My name is Georgina Carpenter. I am 24 years old and I'm a new enough fursuit maker in Ireland. I've only been making about two years now. My character is called Zephyr and she's a little species I made up really because I always loved dragons ever since I was tiny. I loved the mythology, the video games, going back to Spyro when I was like five years old. And I also just loved anything fluffy, so I kind of smushed the two together and that's where I came up with Zephyr's design. And that's where I got interested in the whole costume aspect because I was like, this is really cool. It's an art piece that you can wear. And I just thought that was really neat. The first time I walked into a furry convention, it was Confuzzle 2017. But I walked in and I didn't realise that there were going to be so many other people who had outfits of every different colour under the sun. Like there were people who had LEDs in their suits and there were people with wings. And there were people that had suits like, you know, with really long claws on them and they're made out of different materials. And I just remember seeing them all being like, holy God, these people are really weird. Like, this is cool. My persona, my main persona, is Red and White Wolf Fox Stormers. He's been my main persona since I created him back in 1996 when I joined the fandom. Um, essentially he was just a, like an art outlet for my emotions and that. So I was going through a really, really bad patch and get picked on a lot, bullied a lot. So I felt myself, I need somewhere getting all of this out. So I created this little white ball of fur with two big, big ears on, with this fluffy tail. Uh, you can see behind me some of my older works leading up to my newer works. <laughs> There's been quite a bit of change in that two years. Um, I also do a lot of digital art, so I draw people's characters for commissions and stuff, and I also make little sculptures. So I've made little sculptures of Zephyr, and I make little sculptures of dragons, and basically if I can, if I see something and I like it for myself, I'll try and make it. <laughs> Every single convention, um furry convention has a thing where they sponsor a different charity um, so they'll pick a different charity it's usually something animal related um, because hello but what they do is um, they'll fundraise as much as they can doing different events over the days and such and at the end they have a big reveal about how much they raise for it because there was uh, over 2,000 people at the last confuzzle there which is in Birmingham every year and they raise money for Gentle Shaw Wildlife Centre and um, over 2,000 people raised over £25,000 in the end of it which Twenty-five thousand pounds is so much money, but you just break it down. Each person gives what they can, so it's that. It's that how supportive we were of each other, um, and how we kind of come together, like in these really dark times. Uh, that is basically what defines the community.
I think what it brings, what brings everyone together. I mean, we are a very open and welcoming community. A lot of people who do come into the community have felt like there's nowhere else to fit in, or they've been pushed to the outside of, you know, society. They feel like they're on their own. But then they discover the furry fandom and suddenly it brings them out of their shell because, in a way, firstly, it's like an armour. You know, they can interact with people on a different level with the fursuit as opposed to when they're out to. That's one of the beautiful things about, you know, having fursuit that. In normal day-to-day -day life, artists are kind of put down as, like, people say oh that's not a real job whereas in the furry community you're almost hailed as an artist because you can bring their characters to life you can give them movement give them shape bring just the ideas to fruition and that's very much sought after and i just felt really appreciated being an artist in this little community and so it stuck <laughs> what makes us come back every year is chance to hook up with people that I've not seen for a long time. You know, I have a lot of friends who are from all over the world and Confuzzle is the only place I actually get to meet them face to face. Uh, it's, it's also a chance to hook up and make new friends. My mum is an artist so she's that bit more accepting of creative stuff generally. My dad didn't know what the community was at all until I wore my outfit in front of him. I never told him or anything. Um, that I was getting this outfit. So what I did is I just put it on the full thing up in my attic uh, and then I called my dad up. I was like, hey dad, come upstairs for a second. I want to show you something. So he opened the door and he just takes one look at me. He goes, oh, sweet Christ. So <laughs> there, he's pretty accepting of it. He really is. He just thinks it's quite strange. Having hobbies that you can share with your significant other will increase the duration of the relationship like tenfold. Like literally any little hobby you can think of, introducing your partner to it, letting them try it even, just to see if it's for them or not, giving it a go, it helps so much with the relationship and it really brings you closer together, having something you can work on together. I, re I just bloody enjoy it, simple as that. My wife enjoys it as well outside of the community it's uh it's not always that easy you know it's not as easy to be accepted outside of the community as it is to be accepted in it the furry community from the outside it was not a very good media press and i'm going to be straight up about that every every community every fandom has its bad sides you know i'm going to be completely candid and honest with you we're no exception but what furries are, we are a group of people who like to, as you see, not all of us do it, not all of us dress up as fur, weird furry animals, but a lot of us enjoy the interaction with other people, the love and interest of anthropomorphic characters, and, you know, don't judge us. Don't judge us as weird or strange. We're no different to cosplayers, we're no different to people that go to Star Trek conventions or Comic Cons. All we are is a group of people out there just to enjoy ourselves and have fun. To call back on Star Trek, back in the 1960s, uh, late 1960s, uh, Trekkie fans were considered weird and outcast and any new community will start off with a knee-jerk reaction of, oh, this has got to be bad, it's weird. And we are weird. <laughs> we won't make any... Um, misconceptions about it. We know we're weird. Uh, well, I mean, the media likes a good story. And when everything's fine and there's no kind of shenanigans, whatever, it's boring to write about. So I have noticed that every time they appear on the likes of Ireland they, um, or different interviews, whatever, the first thing that tends to be asked are, oh, is this a sexual thing? Is this a fetish? And to be honest, there's no straight answer to that. There's everyone, like people have fetishes for absolutely everything. Um, they're, like people, adults have so many different interests in everything. But the thing is, the community in itself is not inherently a fetish. It's just not. It's a group of people who like walking, talking animals. They're, so long as they're not harming anyone and everyone consents to it and nothing bad happens, there's nothing wrong with it. Like sex is individual to the person. Uh, your interests are individual to you. So yeah, someone might be into it for a sexual reason, but like I myself am not So asking me that is just deeply offensive. 
you know, even if our characters are multicoloured or a strange mixture of different animals, it's all just a bit of harmless fun. You know, 23 years in the community and I still have that same love and spark that pulled me into it in the first place. I think over time, these communities, as people realise, oh, they're not hurting anyone, people realise it's all okay. You always have your bad apples. Like, I think just trying to show the best side of any fandom is the best thing you can do to try and help change the stigma. To be a furry for me, it's the ability to enjoy the interest in anthropomorphic animals, which is what one of the foundation stones of the fandom is about. It's about learning respect, tolerating others, you know, support one another, being there for each other through difficult times, and just generally having a hell of a laugh. When I, when I pull my fursuit on, it's a chance to cut loose, you know, step away from reality for a bit. Because when, when I pull my suit on, I step fully into my character. There's literally people from all walks of life. It didn't matter if you were black, white, gay, straight. Because um, everyone had a common interest and that was the anthro side of it. Like No one knows who you really are under the suit when you know, you're dressing up as an orange fox or a blue husky. Like It doesn't matter who you are, what you look like you're accepted for your personality, which I found really cool. If you feel uh, like a bit different, maybe you, you know, you're a bit questioning your gender, your sexuality, what, uh, what the things you like, it's a fantastic community for that because the, the LGBT community is so, so strong in the furry fandom that we're absolutely welcoming of everyone. Um, and it's, it's that sort of support group that I really, really like about the community because it's like an awful lot of these people can be quite outcast and they might feel very lonely in real life and they mightn't have that support network that they need uh, like I know myself that I've uh, I've some uh, furries, God rest their soul they're, they may be very very anxious, incredibly stressed or depressed and it's a really good way for them to essentially come to the community and find the support that keeps them going like you know, keeps, it keeps them happy, keeps them smiling Furries are anyone like who likes animals like who and who self-identifies as a furry you can like the likes of Zootopia Robin Hood all dogs go to heaven and not be a furry and um, if you like the art if you like the idea of animals standing on two legs and talking to each other and dressing up in clothes the furry community is great for that so it's essentially anyone who just likes anthropomorphic animals you've got just people all over the world investing their time and their skills into it from all walks of life and it is quite unifying, I think. No one's excluded really.